Hello, this is Shinlo from UC Urban. Today we'll present our paper on performance stability in RSM-based storage systems. So RSM tree is a write optimized structure based on outer place updates. It has a mutable memory component that stores all the incoming writes. Whenever the memory component is full, it will be, it will be flushed to disk to form some immutable disk component. And multiple disk components can also be merged together to improve the query performance. Even though the RSM trees are very popular these days, they have been routinely criticized for their high performance vibrancies caused by the rep stalls. For example, we have seen that um, log structure techniques can cause uh, can exhibit ex unacceptable latency spikes. Uh, li a recent experiment re uh, result also showed that RSM trees can lead to large tail latency and a drastic performance fluctuation. The same claim was also made from um, the theory community, where it claimed that the buffer and, buffer and flush technique can sometimes significantly increase the latency of the operations. Finally, we, also, we have also seen a similar claim from small data, an industrial um, storage block. It said that uh, the MyRox has the most reverence, and that is largely from uh, the compaction stores. In order to verify these criticisms, we conducted a micro experiment based on RoxDB with a rather only workload. And as, as you can see, RoxDB actually exhibited a significant throughput fluctuation after the first 300 seconds. Now let's, look, now let's take a closer look at the red stop problem in RSM trees. We argue that due to the inherent mismatch between the fast in memory writes and the slow operations, the red stores are inevitable. To see this problem, let's consider the workflow of RSM trees. So initially, we have fast in memory writes. Um, fast in memory writes, and whenever the memory is full, we have to flush it to disk and perform some additional merges. These are relatively slow operations because they, they involve the disk IOs. And then whenever the uh, background flush and merge cannot keep up, there has to be some back pressure to limit the in-memory writes. And finally, whenever the memory is full, the writer will, uh, will, will be stored. So storing writes in this case is actually critical to ensure the stability of the SMG. Without this, merge, um, without this mechanism, eventually we will either run out of memory or we're gonna run out of disk space. But does, make, does this make the RSM trees unusable for latency system, uh, system workloads? In this paper, we try to answer this question with the focus on the following two sub-questions. First, how to evaluate the impact of, of red stores on the red latencies? Second, how do we reduce the red stores of RSM trees during the wrong time? Now let's first look at how do we evaluate the red stores of uh, red latencies. Uh, most of the existing research that criticize RSM trees actually use the closed system assumption by using a fixed number of clients to generate writes as quickly as possible. And then they're gonna measure the latency of each write. Even though this model is suitable for measuring the, rest, uh, the maximum throughput of the RSM tree, it is not suitable for measuring the write latency. The problem is that the write stalls will, al will always occur because of, the inherent, because of the inherent mismatch between the fast in-memory writes and the slow background oper uh, operations. So better, a better approach is to use the open system model by, uh, by using some clients to generate writes using a predefined arrival process and, and store the writes into a queue. The RSM tree is gonna process the data from the queue, uh, from the queue. Here the write latency actually contains the queuing time and the processing time. So the key difference between these two models is that in the open system model, the write rate is not determined by the RSM tree, but rather the writes are generated following a predefined um, data arrival process. When we use the open system model, a key design decision is that how do we set uh, uh, the arrival rate? The arrival rate directly impacts the write latency. So if you think about, think about it, the write stores are more likely to happen under the higher arrival rates when the, uh, when the merges cannot keep up. But for a better, um, system utilization, it is also desirable to maximize the data arrival rate so that we, don't, we do not want to waste some system resources. To balance this, these two conflicting goals, we actually want to, want to ask the following question. If we set the arrival rate very close to the maximum rest report of the RSM tree, will that cause write stalls? So based on this idea, we propose a two-phase evaluation of write stalls. Uh, first, we're gonna use the testing phase to measure the maximum rest report of RSM tree using a closed system model. And then based on the ma maximum rest report, we're gonna perform an additional running phase to use an open system model to, uh, to, to measure the redundant rate latency. 
So if the resulting rat latency is actually very small, this, this means the RSMG performs quite well. It doesn't, the rest noise is no longer a problem. But if the um, resulting rat latency is very high, then that means something is wrong with the implementation. We must fix it. Now let's, let's consider the second problem. How do we minimize rat stalls? To, uh, to solve this problem, let's first examine the workflow of why the rat stall happens. So initially, we have, a, we have a lot of fast in-memory writes, and then the disk components will accumulate. Eventually, we will have too many disk components that either reach the predefined threshold of the, uh, of the RSMG. And after that, the flush cannot proceed. It has to stop. Um, and finally, the writes are just stopped. Uh, right, that's gone. So the key, uh, the key problem here is that in order to minimize the right stalls, we must minimize the number of these components over time to make sure that this too many these components situation never happen. So now the question becomes that how do we design a merge scheduler to minimize the number of these components over time? So in this talk, I will look at the following two dimensions in terms of the degree of concurrency and, uh, and how do we allocate the L bandwidth. So again, in this talk, I will only talk about the, uh, the full merges. In, in full merges, these components are merged without partitioning. So in the full paper, we also talk about, we, we also examine the merge scheduling for the partition merges as well. So in general, for the Terry merge policy, for the level merge policy, there is only one disk component per level and it is merged to the next level when it's full. The Terry merge policy can have multiple disk components uh, per level. So now let's first look at the first, um, scheduler, which is called a single threaded scheduler. In this case, all the merge operations are stored into a FIFA queue. The merge policy is responsible for creating merge operations and appending them into the queue. Well, the, uh, the scheduler will execute the merge operations from the queue using a single thread. Well, even though this is a very simple uh, scheduler, it can be a very bad idea. Sometimes executing a large merge, for example, at level two, can block the writes for a very long time. So in order to minimize the number, uh, number of these components over time, we must perform concurrent merges. So the idea is that whenever a large merge is being executed, we can still execute the small merge to reduce the number of these components uh, promotedly. Uh, now the key question is that how do we allocate our bandwidth to those concurrently running merges? Now the one strategy is to, allo is to allocate our bandwidth evenly to all the merges. This is the be default behavior that we can get if we run multiple merge operations without any control. So now in, in this scheduler, we call that the fast scheduler, gonna execute all the merge operations concurrently using multiple threads. So this is different from the single threaded scheduler in terms of uh, the number of uh, a concurrent, a concurrent running of merge operations. But now the question becomes that, can we, can we do better than this fast scheduler? So now in order to minimize the number of these components over time, we actually propose a greedy scheduler. The idea is that it always allocated the full hour bandwidth to the merge operation that has, a, uh, that has the smallest remaining progress. The key idea is that a small merge can interrupt a large merge. So for example here, whenever the merge at le uh, level zero is uh, scheduled, because it's the smallest merge of the entire system, it will, the merge scheduler will execute this merge immediately while pausing the previous executing merge. We have also conducted extensive experiments uh, to evaluate the merge scheduler. For example, this figure shows the results for the labeling merge policy and the Turing merge policy. As you can see, the single threaded scheduler actually performs poorly. It causes a lot of rat stalls. The number of these components is actually very high, and as well as the resulting rat latency. The free scheduler performs better than the single, th single threaded scheduler. It has a better rat latency, but the problem is that uh, and the leverage merge policy, the resulting rate latency is, all, is still very high. But the, the, greatest, the proposed greatest scheduler was always able to minimize the number of these components over time. And as a result, it provides a better, a more stable rest throughput and a much lower rate latency. Now the key takeaway of this experiment is that the greatest scheduler, it was able to always minimize the number of these components over time, providing more stable rest throughput. So there are a few key takeaways of this work. First, with proper merge scheduling, RSM sheets can actually provide stable rest throughput with low latencies. So the rest stalls do not have to limit the, the usability of RSM trees. And also the performance variances should also be considered together with the rest throughput. Sometimes a high rest throughput may not be usable because of its high rate latencies. So additional um, running fees should be, uh, should be performed as well to evaluate the performance variance. 
So if you're in, interested in this work, please see more in the paper for more detailed analysis of merge schedulers, as well as a discussion of the partition algorithm trees. Uh, thank you for watching.